Hello, and welcome back. Hopefully you had no trouble answering this question from part one. Notice that the numbers, other than sine, are the same in all of the answers, so you didn't actually need to do the calculation. If you've understood the definition of change and how we calculate it, you'll know that if the quantity increases, as it does from 1969 to 1999, that's a positive change. And if it decreases, as it does from 1999 to 2019, that's a negative change. And so the answer must be B. Note that it's really easy to just swap the order when you do the calculation, and so it's good to always pay attention before you punch numbers into a calculator to whether the answer should be positive or negative, just in case you punch them in in the wrong order. So frequently we want to understand and be able to predict changes. And so, for example, when two carts collide, they each have a mass and they each have a velocity, and their velocities change during the collision. If we want to predict those changes, it's often very useful to know that there's a funny quantity called the momentum which doesn't change. Now that's rather curious, because notice, both velocities change, but this quantity that involves both of the quantities doesn't change. We say that the momentum of the system is conserved, and this is a useful fact for predicting the outcome of collisions. If you don't understand that yet, don't worry about it. We'll talk about it a lot later on in the course. Similarly, in the case of a mass oscillating up and down on a spring, the velocity of the mass and its distance above its equilibrium position is also changing constantly. And yet, there's this even more complicated quantity involving both the speed and the distance above the equilibrium position, which remains the same. This is the energy, and it is conserved, and this is useful for analyzing the motion of the spring. We'll talk about this as well, a lot, much later in the course. Conservation laws, in particular conservation of momentum and conservation of energy, will be a major theme in this course. Quantities that can't change are said to be conserved. Note the word can't here is very important. As I'm sitting here recording this video, my position is not changing. But it can change. I can get up and walk away from the computer and my position will change. So position is not conserved. The fact that it isn't changing doesn't mean it's conserved. Things that can't change are conserved, and energy and momentum, as we will see, can't change. Mass is sort of conserved. In fact, mass does change. But usually it's only noticeable in nuclear processes. For our purposes in this course, we won't be concerned with nuclear processes, and to a very, very good approximation, mass is conserved. As I'm going to explain in a moment, symmetry is going to turn out to be important to us, and so I thought I'd just explain a little bit about symmetry. I'm sure you have an idea of what symmetry is, but you might never have thought about it this way. Think about this happy face, and what happens when we flip it from top to bottom, or in other words, if you reflect it in this horizontal mirror line. Well, it clearly changes. On the other hand, if, we, if, if you reflect it in this vertical mirror line, it appears exactly the same as it was at the beginning. If you rotate it 90 degrees, then it changes. So what this is showing us is that it's symmetric right to left. A symmetry is some change that you can try out and try to carry out on something which leaves the thing appearing unchanged. So similarly, you can verify that this rug appears unchanged if you reflect it through this mirror line, or this mirror line, or if you rotate it 180 degrees. So those are symmetries of this rug. Why does this matter? Well, it's actually a very deep thing that comes from a mathematician who you probably haven't heard of but should. More people should hear about Emmy Nutter. Nutter's theorem, which applies to things like Newtonian mechanics and quantum mechanics, tells us that symmetries correspond to conservation laws. What does that mean? Well, it means that when we have a physical law and we find that there's a symmetry, it 
tells us about a conservation law. So one symmetry we know is that if you change where your axes are, oh, we've just changed something. But our physical law remains unchanged when we do that. And so our physical law has a symmetry. It turns out that symmetry, translational invariance, corresponds to conservation of momentum. Similarly, as time goes on, our physical law doesn't change. It has time invariance, and that, Noether's theorem tells us, is the reason for conservation of energy. So, although there are a lot of things about conservation laws that I haven't told you and won't tell you until later in the course, we might as well check your understanding so far by using something that you probably already know about. So let's think about water boiling in a kettle in a room, and let's think about which quantities are conserved. The amount of water in the kettle, the amount of water in the room, or the sum of those. So once again, if you're in the course, Moodle will ask you this question. And if you're not, you should still try and come up with the answer before you move on to the next part of the video.